high frequencies, modern low floor trams, level boarding, and a lot of improvement works on the way. It must be some massive city, right? No, this is what describes the tram system of Liepaja, a coastal town of only 68,000 people. It actually amazed me, so let's take a closer look at this peculiar system. This is the single tram line at Liepaja. The small tram system uses a 1000 mm gauge and is electrified by means of 600 volts DC overhead wires, which is rather standard. The total length of the network, consisting of one line, is 7 km and has, rather obviously, just one depot. The current single tram line starts in the northeast of the town at the loop at Drivibus Iola. It then passes by the train and the bus station, before making its way to the city centre. Through the city centre, the tram follows a path to the south, towards its former terminus. Nowadays, it continues to move on to the district of Ezekrast. Where it terminates at the loop of Mirza's Champis Iola. So how did this system become what it is today? The tram system of Liepaja was opened on the 14th of September 1899. Unlike other tram systems dating back to the 19th century, Liepaja's tram system was not opened as a Holstrom tram at first. Instead, Liepaja had the first electric tram of the Baltic states. Up to the Second World War, the tram system expanded, but not much. It actually saw a decline until the Second World War, but afterwards, it finally became really useful. The opening of a metallurgy factory, as well as other workplaces, saw the need of public transport increase. However, up to the 2000s, the tram system saw a rather stagnant situation. Liepaja and Latvia as a whole saw a lot of change freeing themselves finally from the shackles of the USSR in 1991. But the tram system stayed the same. One section closed over this period. But it also saw the modern day alignment getting shape. But then, suddenly in the 2010s, the network saw investment and a new section to Ezekast was opened. Also, the new trams of Concha were ordered and a massive modernization effort was started. All in all, it seems that the system will stick around for many decades to come. The Apaya's tram system is part of an already 19 episode series of videos of public transport systems. I would love to show you many more in the future. It would therefore really be helpful if you would press the like button and subscribe to my channel. So let's now take a look at the fleet. The current tram fleet of Lipaya consists of TMK 2300s, made by the Croatian company Konchar. These trams consist of three cars, which is appropriate for a town of this size. They are overall very similar to their siblings in Zagreb, with similar seating layouts and features. The Paya currently has 14 of these trams. Before the arrival of the TMK 2300s, the Paya's tram system was, rather predictably, operated by Tatra trams. In this case, the KT4s. It was a mixed fleet of newly delivered KT4 SUs and second-hand KT4Ds from a variety of German cities. At the day of filming, however, none of them was operated anymore. So, what will the future hold for this system? Looking at the plans for the future, it seems that for the time being, there's no real plan. In my research, I could only find an article from 10 years ago that was suggesting an extension. This extension may make sense based on the areas where it would lead to, but I don't think it will happen soon, if at all. You see, the Apaya's population is still declining. Having a tram system and keeping it as modern as useful as possible is, I think, already a big task for a town of Liepaja. I think that what Liepaja has today is already rather fantastic. 6 to 7 minute headways, low floor accessibility, connections to trip generators, and a complete overhaul that is now ongoing. The short extension to Milza's Champions Ila really made sense, as it was rather easy to implement while it connects to a densely populated district. The extensions proposed in this article from 2013 are a bit more complicated involving a tunnel or viaduct to cross the railway. What I would suggest for the town's public transport system as a whole is to implement more modern ticketing. Similar to Zagreb, funny enough, it is for a first-time visitor rather difficult to figure out where to get the tickets. 
You can buy them on board, but they are much more expensive in that way. I would propose a solution through an app or a couple of ticket machines at high traffic spots, as well as payment through bank cards. Overall, this would remove one of the last barriers for people to easily hop on board of this tram. And with that, we have reached the end of this video. I really hope you enjoyed this video about the tram system of Viapaya. If you'd like to see more of my work in the future, please do not forget to subscribe to my channel. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Oh, 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 oh,